Many of the important hormones in the animal body are produced by the pituitary gland, but not all are. We'll now go over the major peripheral endocrine glands outside the pituitary, the thyroid gland, the parathyroid glands, the pancreas, and the adrenal glands. Three hormones come from the thyroid, which is in the neck. These hormones are thyroxine, triiodothyronine, and calcitonin. You might hear thyroxine and triiodothyronine called thyroid hormones. Thyroid hormones are essential for regulating basal metabolic rate. They control the enzymes that are involved in carbohydrate and lipid metabolism. Thyroid disorders can have big consequences for the metabolism. Adults with hypothyroidism caused by insufficient production of thyroxine have problems using fats and carbohydrates, so they are often tired and overweight and feel cold. Hypothyroidism is more serious in babies and children because thyroid hormones are also vital for growth and development. Adults with hyperthyroidism, or too much thyroxine, on the other hand, have high metabolisms, tend to overheat, and often suffer from weight loss and nervousness. We mentioned a third hormone produced by the thyroid, calcitonin. As you might have guessed from its name, calcitonin regulates calcium blood levels by inhibiting osteoclast activity in bones, which break down the bone. Now that we've covered the hormones secreted by the thyroid, let's move on to the parathyroid glands. These four small glands are located on the back of the thyroid and produce parathyroid hormone, or PTH. When calcium ion in the blood falls too much, PTH stimulates bone cells called osteoclasts to release calcium ion into the blood by dissolving calcium carbonate crystals. It also prompts the kidneys to take up calcium ion from the urine, and it's important for the activation of vitamin D. Vitamin D, an inactive form of a hormone, is created in the skin in reaction to ultraviolet light. PTH stimulates enzymes in the liver and kidneys to add the hydroxyl group that activate vitamin D as a hormone. The active form of vitamin D is essential for raising calcium ion blood levels and mineralizing bone. Now we turn to the adrenal glands, which are located just above the kidneys. Each gland is composed of the adrenal medulla, surrounded by the adrenal cortex. The adrenal medulla secretes epinephrine and norepinephrine when signaled by the autonomic nervous system. These two hormones are partly responsible for putting you on the alert. The so-called fight-or-flight response, increased heart rate, and blood pressure, and so on. The adrenal cortex secretes steroid hormones called corticosteroids, including cortisol. Cortisol and some related corticosteroids help keep up glucose homeostasis. In mammals, the hormones are called glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids are produced in response to stress and also affect the immune system. Another important corticosteroid is aldosterone, which regulates minerals in the body. It stimulates the kidneys to reabsorb sodium from urine, which results in the release of potassium from the kidneys into the urine. Our last major peripheral endocrine gland is the pancreas, which you'll find next to the stomach and connected to the duodenum of the small intestine. The pancreas contains clusters of cells called islets of Langerhans. The islet's beta cells secrete insulin, which is vital for regulating glucose in the blood. The islets of Langerhans also produce glucagon, an antagonist of insulin, from their alpha cells. Whereas insulin stimulates the uptake of glucose from the blood, glucagon prompts the release of glucose and fatty acids into the blood. After insulin secretion decreases between meals, glucagon is secreted. People who lack functional beta cell clusters in the islets of Langerhans have type 1 diabetes, or diabetes mellitus. This is why they need injections of insulin. Their bodies don't produce any. They may be peripheral, but these glands, thyroid, parathyroid, adrenal, and pancreatic, are part of what keeps you energized, alert, and even just alive.